Now we have to move on to the second speaker, uh, who is uh, Professor Frédéric Mercier, who is the chair of the Department of Anesthesia in Antoine Béclair uh, in Clamart in the southeast of, of Paris, uh, and who is working uh, hardly in a, a level three maternity unit, which uh, of course uh, concentrates a large number of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, severe cases, both maternal and, and, uh, and fetal. And uh, we would like to ask to Frédéric to uh, talk about cardiac arrest in a pregnant woman. If I can get my slides, please. That should be nice, thank you. Okay, so I go back to the title. So cardiac arrest. Uh, cardiac arrest uh, in the obstetric setting is hopefully a rare event and uh, it is very stressful. Um, here you have uh, some uh, recent guidelines that have been released, uh, namely uh, from SOAP, American Art, and European guidelines. We have also interesting information from two epidemiological studies coming from USA and UK. And I would like to mention also this very interesting didactical uh, uh, article uh, summarizing uh, the management of cardiac arrest during pregnancy that came up uh, only six months ago. And I'm going to use it uh, mainly for this presentation. So, you can see on the left-hand side of this slide the uh, etiologies uh, that are listed in this article about maternal cardiac arrest. And as you can see, they are listed in a mnemonic alphabetical order, A, B, C, D, up to H, uh, to re easily remind all these etiologies. You can see that uh, bleeding is the first cause. The second cause, uh, unexpectedly uh, maybe, is cardiac disease. And you have also here uh, the cause uh, related to amniotic fluid embolism that we just discussed before, uh, pulmonary embolism, and sepsis. Uh, quite uh, surprisingly, uh, the hypertension causes are not that much, 6% only, and uh, the anesthetic cause have an important uh, range of incidence, ranging from 8% in the US study up to 25%, very surprisingly, in the UK study. On the uh, left hand side, uh, right hand side, sorry, of the uh, slide, uh, you can see this uh, didactical algorithm uh, that is uh, presented on the article. And uh, as you can see first, uh, very uh, non-specific things like uh, calling from for help quickly, uh, doing CPR, but there are more specific uh, maneuver uh, that needs to be done. Uh, left uterine displacement, as uh, Marie-Pierre already uh, told us, and uh, early bag uh, manual ventilation, and if possible intubation, uh, because uh, the pregnant patients are prone to uh, uh, desaturation and aspira aspiration risk. Uh, the uh, algorithm for uh, defibrillation uh, is not really specific and something uh, very important to, uh, to point to doubt is uh, perimortem uh, caesarean delivery uh, that needs to be uh, implemented uh, four to five minutes uh, no more after uh, the start of the CPR if there is no return of uh, spontaneous circulation and if the gestational age is uh, 20 weeks or uh, more. Uh, here you have a more detailed uh, algorithm uh, that is uh, focusing on the advanced life support. And uh, you can see, for example, that the airway management that is quite specific uh, due to the pregnant uh, state uh, uh, is detailed with early intubation using a smaller endotracheal tube and also uh, uh, paying attention to monitor the capnography. Uh, 
Uh, there are also uh, pointed out here uh, that uh, you need to put the IV line above the diaphragm to avoid a problem with autocaval compression, and uh, uh, the etiologies are listed again. Uh, Marie-Pierre uh, just uh, told uh, you about the Stanford Cognitive Ed. There is um, sadly no specific cognitive aid uh, specifically on maternal cardiac arrest in this emergency manual. Uh, and there is only uh, an aid for asystole, but that is non-specific. So I think uh, regarding to English recommendations, the best uh, to use is the American Art Cognitive Aid. It looks quite basic, but in fact it is quite complete and it is specific to obstetric setting. If you read French, uh, you have here a nicely uh, cognitive aid uh, that lists uh, all the step-by-step uh, -step management uh, uh, for a maternal cardiac arrest in the labor ward. And in addition, uh, you have on the second page of this uh, cognitive aid uh, a clear uh, timing uh, between CPR, defibrillation, and adrenaline use, which is very helpful in these circumstances. So uh, the take-home messages, first, do not lose precious time. Diagnosis, help, and CPR as soon as possible should be implemented. Note time zero of CPR start. Ask for OB cognitive aid checklist uh, to uh, be available uh, quickly. Uh, basic life support is nearly unchanged as compared to a non-obstetric setting with CPR and a defibrillation as usual. The only specific thing is to uh, do the manual left uterine displacement and remove fetal monitoring uh, for defibrillation. Advanced life support is more specific with early intubation, smaller endotracheal tube, uh, IV above diaphragm, and uh, uh, looking for the main etiologies with the ABCDFGH uh, um, nanotechnic uh, uh, system, particularly focus on, on OB and anesthesia reversible cause plus HNTs non-specific causes. Perimortem season delivery uh, within four to five minutes should be done on site of the cardiac arrest, and always think about using capnography, asking for echocardiography and uh, the potential indication, as we just uh, discussed before, of ECMO or extracorporeal uh, life support. And uh, last but not least, uh, it is very important to think about institutional involvement, and this can be done particularly, uh, sorry, uh, I go back. Uh, Yes, that's good. With anticipation, early warning scores, uh, cardiac arrest equipment, cardiac arrest simulation scenario, and cardiac arrest case review. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Frederick, for this talk. Uh, may I come back maybe to two of the three questions? First, you mentioned in, on your last slide that uh, uh, perimortem caesarean delivery should be done on site. Could you comment what you mean by on-site caesarean delivery? Yes, uh, it is very important not to move the patient. So the caesarean delivery should be done where the cardiac arrest occur. And there are uh, many arguments uh, for doing so, uh, ma many reasons, in fact. Uh, first, of course, if you uh, uh, it is to uh, spare time. So uh, if you move uh, to the operating theater, it is well shown by simulation scenario uh, that you are going to lose a lot of precious time. That's the first point. The second point is that CPR cannot be done correctly if you move the patient. And CPR is absolutely of paramount importance. A uh, third uh, important uh, reason is that, in fact, it is useless uh, to move. 
because in fact there is no anesthesia to perform. There is no risk of bleeding as long as the patient is in a, a circulatory arrest. And uh, you just need a scalpel, so uh, nothing uh, specialized uh, really for equipment to do the C-section. Uh, so those are good uh, reason not to move. And in addition, the last epidemiological study I mentioned, the UK epidemiological studies, suggest strongly that there is less mortality if you stay at the site where the cardiac arrest occurred to do the C-section. Thank you, Fred. Maybe one short uh, question, sh short answer. Yes. Uh, regarding uh, one question which, has, uh, which was uh, asked by uh, the web audience uh, about the mortality rate. Uh, you mentioned, that, of course, that the mortality rate is, is, is high, but is there any difference between causes, for example? Yes, there are differences between causes. Uh, for example, uh, anesthetic causes have the lower mortality rates, that has been well shown in the uh, UK study, uh, only 0 to 20 percent. And the worst, for example, is for sepsis, which is more than 50 percent. In between, you find uh, hemorrhage and thromboembolism. And uh, surprisingly, again, uh, hypertensive causes have a quite low rate uh, of mortality if the resuscitation is well done. Thank you for